Oh, shoot. Ah, God darn it. Of course, right when I go live. There we are, people. Stun you all with his silence. Ha ha ha! You didn't expect that, did you? Greetings, humans. Greetings, and welcome back to another fun-filled episode. Bear here. Twenty-nine year veteran of the woods, people. You're listening to YouTube's number one review show by a bear. It's great to have each and every one of you with us here today, including our Russian bots, Lurkers, and even P-Money. What the heck? Why not, man? Why not? Uh, cheering on, old Kucherov. 100 assists, baby. MVP of the league, we hope. We hope. Knock on wood. Knock on wood out here people we we could very easily do a just a complete hockey talk show here people it could just be nothing but hockey talk bear would be thrilled but we're not gonna do that we're not gonna do that we're gonna take a left turn wanted to send a shout out to old kucherov here congratulations sir congratulations uh four canadian teams are officially in the playoffs so go leafs tonight Old P Money's beloved Leafs out there. Unfortunately, they lost in their last game against the uh, against the Lightning. Couldn't quite get their superstar player the requisite goals that he needed, but that's all right, man. That's all right. We got we got old Kucherov 100 plus plus that actual goal as well. So yay for him, MVP of the league out there. Yes, indeed. Uh, why are we looking at the Lightnings? They don't even play tonight. Well. We have them in our hearts, P-Money. We have them in our hearts. I, I should make a poll. I should make a poll if Kucherov is going to get get the MVP or not here. Let me just... Uh, oh, uh, great to see Derpy here. I haven't seen him in a while. Great to have you here. We're actually going to be doing... We're going to be doing a review here in just a minute. Hold on. Beer is literally biting at the teeth here. Biting at the bit to get this going. Uh, let's see. Hold on just one second. Here. Question mark. That would be yes or... Is it you? Course, course? I guess. Whatever. If it's misspelled, that's fine. I don't care. Don't care whatsoever. So uh, go ahead. Put in your votes now if you want. We're going to see if Cooch is going to get the MVP of the year, people. Go ahead. Put in your votes right now. Right. Right canal, people. <laughs> oh, it's Bear's favorite time of the year. Just getting to stir the pots with old pea money out here. That's all right. <laughs> all right. We actually have... A book review to do. I know it, it's shocking. Beer could just talk about the lightning for the next hour. He's not going to do that. Not going to do that because, quite frankly, they play tomorrow night. But also, uh, people, people, it's it's Bear's time to do a little review here. So, um, I, I tell you what, people, I really tell you here, uh, it's it, this is this is uh, an enjoyable, enjoyable one out here. You know, Bear. You know, a lot of times he, he's went through, I never meant, never really meant to do a, you know, a best comic of the year or anything like that. It's not really, not really the way that Bear goes out here, but um, uh, we've had it in the past where Bear has kind of talked about certain comics that's, gosh, he really, really likes and enjoys and really tries to promote and uh, tell people about it and everything. We, we've got him through the through the years here, I mean, of course, we've got um, a good old Battle Megan and Knuckle Bomb, one of one of Bear's favorites out here. I mean, I tell you, Kyung Lee uh, with the Thick Ladies, uh, the manga stuff, it, just excellent. Excellent book. Can't recommend it enough. Uh, hopefully, we can still get it. I don't know. Let's see. This is number 515 there, so um, we shall see. Enjoyed Battle Made in Knuckle Bomb. That was Bear's very first best book in comics gate. 
Um, mainly a great book, great story. Um, also just trying to bring people in. So a lot of people were kind of interested in manga at the time. So um, uh, Battle Maiden still, still up there in Bear's Heart. Come back, young, wherever you are. Come back, young. Uh, Earthbound uh, from Narwhal, uh, one of the greats out there. Um, uh, literally, literally came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere there. Uh, with just an enjoyable book all around. Uh, took a little bit to get into it, but once you got into kind of the, the story and what was going on with everything, uh, one of Bear's uh, favorite uh, books that year. And of course, we see uh, Cyber Frog 2, uh, Bear's book last year. And of course, uh, Wraith of God the year before that. Well, well, we got to put in one more, people. We got to put in one more. Step aside, everybody else. That would be... From the G ship out here. Gary Shipman, Titan Mouse of Might, Volume 3. Easily, de definitely top five. Probably easily could be top three books. I don't know if he considers himself comic kid or not. I uh, Whatever. Uh, Bear, listen. I, here, here's Bear's expertise here. There we go. There is the, the cap that Bear's wearing. So, you know where Bear's standing on all this stuff, but... um. Uh, definitely, definitely one of Bear's uh, very new favorite books out there. Uh, got to read that the other night. What an enjoyable book. What I, I really, I, I tell you people, Bear, Bear really loves this book. I, not that one or two was any bad. Um, they, they were all very good. Uh, 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 Titan number one, excellent book. Titan number two, excellent book. Uh, uh, tried to promote that in the past. I mean, got several different varieties. In fact, I got the the old... <laughs> you don't see the, too many of these. The old artist edition. There you go. Pretty cool stuff from Titan 1. Uh, it's not quite 11 by... Uh, uh, is it 11 by... 11 by 9? I, th I think 11 by 9. It's not quite that, but um, a lot... Uh, you can kind of compare the two there. There we go. Um, so got a number of the books... Uh, Titan number three, j just uh, really what an amazing, amazing book out there. I don't want to spoil the book uh, too much here, um, but did want to say that, uh, man, uh, Gary Shipman could have went any number of ways with the book that he had here. Um, essentially, Titan, uh, Mouse of Might, is, uh, think of Batman, but as, as, as a little mouse. Um, so he could have went a couple different ways. He he could have just went very commercial and leaned into the whole uh, Batman as a mouse uh, type situation. Could have went, uh, it's it's a kid's book, but with a lot of just very um, uh, interesting themes. Heavy themes, heavy philosophical, um, even religious uh, uh, connotations in there. I'm sure the kids would enjoy reading it, but it's it's a little bit more deeper uh, than that. It, you know, of course, maybe your little Johnny out there is, is a special little boy or girl. Uh, but, you know, for the most kids out there, I don't, I, they would probably get it surface level. Um, kind of like Cyber Frog. Cyber Frog is a, just a great book as, you know, a cybernetic frog uh, battling um, alien bees. Uh, but it's also got the undertone of what was going on with uh, Ethan Van Skyver. Uh, how he was dealing with cancel culture, uh, how he was dealing with people that just basically wanted to get rid of him. So you can read the book either way. Uh, same thing with uh, Miasma here, Titan number three. Um, a very deeply, uh, deeply personal, uh, deeply... Uh, uh, Titan is looking in upon himself here. So uh, very much of him as his sort of inner conscious, inner soul that he has. So um, oh, let me just show some artwork here. Let me just show some stuff here that uh, I tell you. Let me get, uh, sorry, Kucherov. Let me get rid of you here. Let me bring you guys in. There we go. But vote early and vote often, people. Vote early, vote, vote often here. But uh, some great, uh, great, uh-oh, bad sound? Uh-oh, hold on one second. La, 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 la. Is it? Test, test, test. Oh, great. Hold on one second. Gosh dang it. Let's see. Little thing with a thing. Uh, it's plugged 
again. Okay. Test, test, test. Law. Okay, sounds better? I think. I think it sounds better. All right, I apologize, people. Apologize about the bad sound. P-Money, better or worse? Yay or nay, sir? Yay. Or you, you're telling me here. You're telling me here. So uh, there we go. Let me get... Let me do the thing while the thing while we wait on that. Let me get rid of can I do interact and no, I don't want to close it. I'll just vote. Of course. Ah gosh dang it. Okay, get out of that. Uh, no, don't I ah oh, for crying out loud. Uh, uh, better, he says. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, does it do it? Still do it. Okay, for crying out loud. Alright, one second, people. Professional show. Talk amongst your shelves out there, people. Up there, tries to get the browser working here. Okay, what's going on, man? Let's see if we need a thing. Da, 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 da. Let's see if it works. Of course not. Why does it not work, man? Um, hmm. Uh, well, I apologize, people. You're you're not gonna have any chats tonight. Uh, Bear will read them though. Beer will read them. But uh, uh, let me get back to the actual review here for you good people. Um, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff that uh, Gary Shipman was able to do um, essentially with inks and a white piece of paper. Um, I, I've i seen the artwork before with Gary's stuff in his other, um, other books that he has going on. Uh, so he, he does this sort of... Um, uh, contrast, the black and white sort of contrast, but this really kind of just blew it out of the water, and I I apologize, I don't want to give too much away. Um, I, I was a little bit uh, kind of uh, scratching the head here, like, okay, how does this all fit together and everything? It, it seems a little bit surreal. It is very, very surreal. Uh, very art. The best way that Bear can describe it, reading it, was that it's like like going to an art exhibit, kind of fancy pants art exhibit, you know, looking at the painting up along the wall there. Uh, and it has, uh, motion isn't the right way to describe it there, but, um, uh, you know, instead of it just being kind of one static uh, uh, painting, uh, multiple stuff. And the way that it flows, like a good good example here, how, how it kind of flows uh, between panels. Everything was easy to read, easy to follow, um, uh, had a pattern and a beat to it. Um, all the panels fit together. I like how he kind of would go from kind of white areas in one side of the page to kind of black areas in the other page. Just excellent, excellent work, hands down. Some of the best work that Bear has seen from Gary Shipman. Um, and also just a very personal, of course, it's Titan looking in on himself also say it's uh, the artist as well looking in on himself as well so some very i would assume some very personal stuff for barry that gary that he is he, he is showcasing to the he is letting letting loose um uh, exposing his soul uh, a little bit there to the world and i mean that's hard that's hard to do because 90 percent of the time you know the world is cruel wants to reject reject anything out there so uh Putting that stuff out there without any in inhibitions, um, and then just still nailing the story and nailing the um, uh, heart of not only the character but what he's talking about here. Gary could have done very easy stuff here, very easy stuff, make it very commercial. Um, he didn't. He he went completely the opposite way. Says I've got a story to tell. I'm going to tell it my own way, and um, it worked. It really, really, really worked. Um, everything in there. I, I tell you, people, Bear, unless there's something where Bear is confused about when he's reading a book to kind of review, a lot of times Bear will just, nine times out of ten, just be uh, checking out the story. I, of course, the artwork's always great. Don't get Bear wrong. Uh, but main, mainly focused uh, uh, story first. Is an aspiring writer out here. So uh, story first and enjoying the art um, uh, in addition to that. Unless there's something kind of odd or weird, you know, it's not like Bear will go back and kind of re-go re through some stuff uh, or, or just kind of sit there and just 
kind of look at the art, kind of staring at it or, or pondering it. I, Bear going through this um, literally would get to the end of a page and just say, okay, let me take a minute and just look and see what sort of beautifulness is going on here. I thought that was great. I got to the end of the second chapter and was like, I, I literally knew, Bear literally knew at the end of the second chapter that this was something that was really uh, very special. Very, I, I, I really feel a, a little bad because... You know, number one, it was special because Bear it's like, oh, there's not that many books out there that, you know, people are able to get a hold of and take a look at this. So you kind of felt, ooh, la la. On the other hand, you're like, gosh, dang it, there needs to be more people looking at this book. A great book that needs to come out. I hope, I hope it's not, you know, 50, 100 years time from now, uh, Gary finally gets his due. I hope he gets it uh, sooner than, well, he has a little bit. Let me go to it here. We were talking about this the last time uh, with the uh, Heroic Awards. How do I still have the chat over there? Crying out loud. Aye, 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 aye. Uh, anyhow, let me just... Uh, anyways, he's got... Uh, he got the Heroic Awards finalist uh, for the best... I think it was best story? Uh, best story. A excellent story, but also the story that went with the art as well. So uh, definitely, definitely needs to be a winner... Uh, hopefully, let's see, broadcast on the Comics Crusader Network. I don't know how how us mere mortal uh, readers out here can, um, you know, advocate for one artist or not for the Heroic Awards, but I would, Beer would be at the first of the line out there saying, hey, Beer, uh, Gary needs to go ahead and get this award at C2E2. That's the best part, too. Oh, my gosh. I... The behind the scenes of that. So uh, John Malin, um, uh, Ethan Van Skyver, Shane Davis, a, a number of the other kind of um, uh, uh, bigger, bigger in volume. Also a little bigger as well. Uh, bigger in volume uh, kind of sellers out there. We're going to go to a uh, um, comic convention called C2E2. Uh, got everything situated, paid for the booth and everything. And then, of course... What usually happens with Comics Gate stuff is they got canceled. They they got um, uh, removed uh, from the um, uh, from the floor there. They were going to have to go either to the hotel or something else to do their uh, to do their comic stuff. Uh, Gary actually got in got into C two E two with his book, and uh, hopefully hopefully will take it all the way. He does does definitely deserve it. Some just excellent excellent artwork here. Uh, with some of that stuff, let me show you some of the um, some of the two page uh, stuff. When Bear first saw this, he was like, "Okay, this is kind of kind of an odd odd look to it." But when you when you actually go and read in the book and you kind of understand what's what's going on in the book, it totally totally makes sense. Again, it's a little bit more surreal um, than anything else because it's actually Titans. Kind of inner journey that he's going through. So he's having a lot of stuff going on in the old noggin there. Going on in the old noggin that he's thinking about. Um, uh, whether or not he's going to be a good, you know, force for good. Or maybe maybe less good out there. Some uh, interesting concepts. Some interesting kind of philosophical stuff out there. Um, uh, in addition to s just some great artwork here. Uh, like this page here, it was... Um, a, a nice page that Bear, Bear saw. You can barely see Titan there in the in the slight middle there. A, a two page, this two pager here, and actually had uh, over there off to the uh, off to the left there. You can see it was actually a little bit more white area. So, you know, a lot of artists would put in, you know, okay, let's put in a couple more plants or a couple more rocks or anything. Gary just says, okay, here it is. I'm done. <laughs> we don't need any more. It's completely blank. It's completely blank out here. So, some good, good stuff from Gary Shipman. Can't say, can't say enough great stuff about that. I mean, he does, he does deserve to be in the pantheon of great uh, comic skate books out here. Uh, at least in Bear's quality. Uh, you know, of course, you might have different, different books that you might think are a little bit higher on the list, but I would say easily top, top five for Bear here. Uh, Tight Mouse of Might. If you haven't already gone and checked it out, people, it is still um, in demand. So if you wanted to go check it out, there you go. 
Unfortunately, $13,000. Uh, 194 backers. We need to push him over at least 200. Gosh dang it. Bear's going to try and check into this every once in a while. Make sure that he promotes this a little bit more. Make sure that Gary gets Gary gets his due out there. That is way too low an amount uh, for a great a great book. And that's kind of what Bear was saying where you know, he could have easily done something where it was uh, uh, more commercial more commercially viable uh, instead kind of uh, I hate to say follow his heart cuz the the heart is actually a um uh, evil character in the book here, uh, but followed his heart and and went with what he thought was kind of the best. And, you know, a lot of times as an artist, that might not work out. But uh, in this case, at least for Bear reading it, excellent. Excellent job. Congratulations, Gary. You did a fantastic, fantastic job. So if you haven't checked it out, Right now, I don't care if you sign out of YouTube and go, uh, forget Bear, just go to freaking Indiegogo. Maybe it's on Kickstarter, I don't know. Go to Indiegogo. It is down in the description. Click on that link. Bear gets nothing for it. It doesn't matter. Literally, go get the book, people. I, I can't say it enough. A 25, 30 bucks, whatever it is, you better go check it out, people. You will be missing out, I swear. I swear to you. Um, Uncle Lee. Uncle, somebody clip this. Somebody go out there and clip this, gosh darn it. Uh, Uncle Lee, if you are listening, sir, uh, you've been saying many, many times out there, you know, you, you want to have, you want to have books that aren't just content. You know, a lot of the, um, a lot of the Friday night ca uh, tight characters, you know, they get in trouble just complaining, complaining, complaining about stuff and never really making anything. And then you got people like Eric July out there that make stuff, but it's not really, you know, other than people, you know, busting his balls over it, it's not really memorable. Um, so you want to be able to make artwork instead of just straight content. Artwork. Artwork. Always yours, sir. Artwork. Artwork. Artwork, sir. Artwork, please. Uh, any any of the comics gate, uh, the bigger bigger names out there, uh, uh, go out, reach out to Gary Shipman, uh, even if it's just like an ash can, um, maybe a cover or something like that. That might be a little too much, but, you know, a simple project or something like that. Get Gary Shipman on there. He's going to just do an amazing job um, uh, and, and fits right in here. Uh, it's kind of interesting. We've got some kind of old pros over here, including Gary. And then you got, you know, the, the new, the newer upcoming uh, uh, comic creators out there. So, um Kind of a wide variety there. That is Bear's Bear's pick. You might be a little bit off, but um, I don't care. I don't care because that's what it is. P Mike says Gary is top three for me for sure. Well, hopefully, hopefully you're able to get your book uh, relatively quickly here. Relatively quickly. Did I have another one? Oh, here we go. I just wanted to show some of the. Some of the stuff where he just kind of goes from panel to panel. I'm going to try not to try not to spoil it too much. Let me see if I can get it bigger. One second here. Beer with beer. There we go. So just like page to page here, it just, um, he's just got some amazing, amazing stuff here um, uh, that you can go check out. Great action. Great action in there at the first part of the book. But really, it's, it's kind of a... A journey of self-discovery here, so it's a little bit more kind of introspective. But uh, I tell you, the the, the main bad uh, character here, the miasma character, uh, scary. Oh my gosh, that is a scary uh, um, uh, design that Gary came up with, and and it was kind of interesting. You know, Bear, uh, when Gary had his channel a, a while back before it got uh, demonetized or, or cut off with the. Um, the crypto bros or whatever, you know, what you watch Gary, you know, come up with whatever he was doing with his inks or whatever, and you're kind of like, okay, how is this? What 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 am I looking at? How, how is this all coming together? And then by the end of the show, when he's kind of finishing up the page and everything, it's like, oh, okay, that's what, that's what it looks like. That's how it's come together. So just the way that he just does his artwork um, is like any other. Um, I, you know, again, let me just go back here to some of the books here. Each one of these is a different, different, a little bit kind of an art uh, style. 
you know, a lot of people might not like Narwhal's art, artistic style out there. Uh, a little bit more simplistic. Um, I, I thought it had a lot of movement and action, which is really nice. Uh, manga, as far as Battle Maiden. Uh, of course, you know, more traditional uh, comic book, either with um, uh, Aaron Lou Presti or Ethan out there. Um, Gary just has his own unique art style, which I don't think can be confused with anybody else. There might be styles that he's taking it off of, but um, uh, just the way it kind of looks and uh, how it kind of all flows together. Um, just just some great... I, I love the staircase one here, just how that kind of came together. I mean, that is just... That's just him putting ink smudges at the edge of the page here. And it all comes together. I mean, not only does it come together artistically where it kind of fits together, it fits together with what he's trying to do is sort of a, um, a surreal, interpersonal, intermouse, a, a journey that he's doing. So... Uh, it fits. Everything fits. Everything works. This is the heart. This sort of multi-tentacled uh, monster there. It's a, it's literally Titan's heart, so to speak. So uh, very, very unique, very distinct. You're not going to see much like that out there. It literally is watching like a fine painting come to life and kind of uh, unfold before your eyes. So uh, once again, I'm not going to spoil spoil any of the uh, stuff out there but please please by all means i don't care if you leave bear's channel right now go check out titan mouse of might volume three it is in the description go check it out right meow people not now right meow right meow <laughs> so there there you go people there's some some good good stuff there from the old the old g ship out here Let's see. Uh, P-Money says, man, some of Gary's art is like the best in the business. It is. It is. Again, I, I was a little bit confused like like this one here where I was like, okay, I'm not sure exactly how, you know, Batman is a mouse. I'm not sure how all this stuff fits together. Again, it's more of kind of an interpersonal uh, a journey uh, with Titan. Uh, the first little bit he is kind of finishing up. I wish that I'd... Uh, reread the second book. There was a couple of characters that I remembered, but I couldn't quite, you know, remember how they, they, they fit to kind of gather. I would say the one thing, and this would kind of be for a lot of the artists out there that have um, uh, comics that are, you know, maybe year or multiple years in between the two, it would really be helpful uh, if you put in, or if it's just a new viewer coming to it, you know, and you're on book two or three, it'd be helpful if you had like a one or two page, you know, previously on, you know, that sort of deal, uh, just, to, just to kind of catch people up a little bit. Um, that would be the only kind of thing that Bear would kind of have a slight ding on with uh, Titan Mouse of Might number three here. I, I wish, I remembered some of the characters, but I, I didn't know how well they kind of, how they, how they fit together. Uh, at least I didn't think so. So um, that, that's kind of the only negative that Bear has. Everything else is a pure positive. Pure, pure positive out here. Uh, P-Money says, uh, when I want to get a personal drawing for my family, I've gone to Gary all of the time. This actually has a um, uh, a, a remark inside. So, uh, yeah, it was great. Or, uh, excuse me, a, a, a head, well, it's not a head sketch. Kind of a, well, let me see if I can get to it. One second. One second here, people. Let's see if I can get to it. There we go. Let's see if I can get back to it here. There we go. So there it is. There's that. That's pretty cool. Although I think I found out why all the crypto bros were able to hack into Gary's account. He's literally using his fingerprint. Let's see if that'll focus. I don't know if it'll focus on the end there, but uh, all the stuff around the edge there. That's all Gary's fingerprints. So <laughs> I probably were able to get into his iCloud account or something like that just through his uh, just through his fingerprints there. But uh, anyway, some fun fun stuff there. <clears throat> uh, P Money also says uh, thanks Bear for praising Gary today. He deserves all the promotion. 
he can get. There we go. Again, one more time. Go check it out, people. Please, by all means. By all means, Beer is going to just promote promote the hell out of this. Let me see. Can I, can I scroll through here? Can I do it? No, I can't scroll. So, I, again, I think it's like 25 30 bucks. The um. The deluxe version here was a little bit more. I want to say it was like maybe forty, but you're getting a heck of a deal. A uh, hundred and forty odd pages, I think. Uh, a, a number of stuff in the background. I, I liked the stuff where he would uh, do the layouts. So he he it was kind of interesting. Some of the artwork you can kind of see. He's like, oh wow, that that's amazing how it how it all fit together. But then you go see the layouts of it, and you're like, oh okay, he was going. You know, this, uh, the way that he drew it the first time didn't really work. So he played around with it a little bit and then finally came up with the final, final drawing he was doing. So a number of stuff that uh, goes along with, um, the deluxe version, I would still say, go pick it up. Bear always enjoys the, uh, the, the hardcovers here always enjoys those hardcovers. So, uh, yeah, either way, either way, uh, do, do go check it out. People do go check it out. <clears throat> ah, take a drink here. One second. Let's see, uh, Ruth, uh, good, good. hello, hello, Mrs. P. Money. Uh, Ruth said for DC, uh, Gary does Batmouse. Uh, if he was doing Marvel, it would be Spider-Mouse. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But no, uh, again, he could have very easily, I mean, he could have been very easily just a, a Batman uh, version of a mouse character. Uh, very easily. But uh, no, he, he took it in his own uh, direction there, which is even more admirable, especially with, you know, again, I, you know, $13,000. That's not a whole lot for the book that you get. Um, I, I, no, you're getting more value for what you're paying is what I meant to say, but uh, Gary isn't getting a whole lot for the book that he's putting out there. So that he was able to say, no, I'm not going to take the, um, uh, commercial route, the easy route. And instead, go out with what, you know, what's a little bit going on inside of me. Which, by the way, people, by the way, Bear learned one thing. Do not piss off Gary Shipman. Whatever you do. Gary, if Bear has uh, pissed you off in any way, uh, he apologizes. Gary uh, apparently is like uh, the, the Michael Douglas uh, character in that one movie. Uh, Ant-Man. No, uh, uh, the Falling Down movie. Uh, uh, just... One, one, um, uh, 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 what was he trying to get? Like an Egg McMuffin. One, a closed Egg McMuffin away from just, you know, shooting up the entire place. I'm crying out loud. No, I'm kidding. Kidding, Gary, kidding out there. But uh, do, do, please, do go check it out. Great stuff. Uh, I love mostly, uh, I mostly love, rather, uh, The Titan is a spinoff from Packin's Land. It makes it feel like world building. Yeah, there's a little bit that goes on in there. More more in book, I, I think, too. Uh, you know, explained a lot of it. Uh, book one a little bit. This, uh, again, it's Titan's own little journey on his uh, on his own. Um, um, trying to discover himself. I don't want to ruin. Don't want to ruin stuff out there. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of the kind of the tagline to it, I suppose. Good stuff. Great stuff. Excellent stuff out there uh, from the G-Ship. Here we go. Mm, pardon me. Ah. Had the burps. Just had a just had a hamburger. You know, boy, that guy was scared. I tell you what. Beer came up on him, you know, grilling out there. Rawr! And guy take Rick running off and like, ooh, free hamburgers. It's delicious, people. Free hamburgers are the most delicious out there. Let's see. Uh, since you said hi to Ruth, says P Money, uh, my oldest daughter uh, said, "Tell Bear I said hi too." Well, hello, little P Money. Hello as well out there. Hope all of the little little P Moneys and Mrs. P Money are doing the best. Doing the best out there. Uh, hopefully, it's not snowing. Uh, it's just starting to turn hot here, P Money. Just starting to turn hot here, people. All right. Well, uh, enough. Enough of that. Again, once again, go check out Titan Mass Bite Volume 3, Indiegogo. Link in the description. Bear can't recommend it enough. Top five easily. Top five easily. I hope. 
I hope a number of you have enjoyed some of the other books there as well. Battle Maiden, Earthbound, poor Cyberfrog, Wraith of God. I haven't read the second one, so if the second one's better, I I, I apologize out there. But uh, there you go. Definitely some stuff uh, to check out. Let's see. Is the browser still working? Nope. Gosh dang it. Well, well, I'm not going to show Kucher off again for P money. Let's just go ahead and get right on into... The news of the day, people. News of the day. I, I would do, I would do the um, uh, campaign updates, but my email is not, not working here, people. So I apologize. Apologize about that. So let me just, let me just make this full screen so everybody can see. Uh, from the good folks out here at Deadline, uh, Anthony D'Alessandro. Civil War uh, has the edge over Abigail with $11 million in the second weekend, people. It's a terrible weekend. It is just a bloodbath out there. And I don't mean the Civil War type. I just mean nobody's going to the theaters. Uh, I think I think we all know why, but that's all right. Uh, anyways, um, I came in, let's see, uh, let's see, um, uh, winning the box office, a skirmish against three wide entries the second weekend. Of eleven plus million dollars after a three point two five million dollar Friday, uh, down fifty seven percent from last week. I think because everybody says it's not a movie about civil war; it's a movie about a photographer. So uh, yada yada. There they go. Uh, just going into the charts here. Uh, let's see. A uh, week two, forty four million dollars total. Eh, it did okay, but I mean, you know, you're not you're not looking at just gangbuster stuff out there. $3 million, three-day $11 million. It's okay. It's doing fine. Uh, Abigail, I, I think, is the horror movie, if Beer remembers correctly. Uh, $4 million on a Friday. Uh, King Kong and Godzilla, The New Empire. Uh, let's see, uh, $2.33 million. So, again, a lot of stuff that's... Just very lackadaisical. Uh, not not doing very well out there for the theater. We we had this uh, just the other week here about essentially a majority of the U.S. population uh, does not even go to the movies anymore as compared to some of the other countries around there. So, yeah, that we can see, you know, uh, uh, Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, $3 million. Uh, Guy Ritchie, Guy Ritchie out there. Good director. Also, um, uh, what's his name? Alex Garland, uh, Civil War. Uh, great, great um, uh, writer of screenplays out there, but uh, eh, not uh, the week just ain't doing that well. And this, this is like you know gonna be one of the high points of the year. It's all, it's literally all downhill from here, folks. Uh, there's only gonna be a couple, couple speed bumps along the way to keep it from just crashing, crashing completely here. Uh, I mean, Kung Fu Panda, doing doing well after a couple weeks. Dune Part Two, doing really well after a couple weeks there. But that that's it. That's all, man. It's all, it's all just a couple million here, a couple million there. That's it, and that's across almost four thousand theaters. I mean, that's uh, uh, don't check Bear's math here, but that's what about uh, nine grand a theater. If Beer's math is correct here, about nine grand a theater. So if you're a theater owner, not not looking very, very well out here. Let's see. Uh, wow, I never heard of Civil War or Abigail. It uh, shows you how much I care about movie releases these days. So uh, there you go. It's We're just doing this just to keep, keep old P money up to date here. Got to keep him up to date here. Uh, speaking... Speaking of keeping people up to date, uh, we had this story uh, on Wednesday. Uh, Google staffers storm the New York City, California, and Seattle offices to protest. $1.2 billion Israeli contract. There they are with the face masks and all that sort of stuff. They're sitting in, in this guy's uh, office, the Google Cloud Manager's office, this guy, this fellow right here. They were doing a sit-in. They were occupying, as they say, an office out there. I, I thought occupation was bad, but uh, no. Apparently, if you if you're wearing a face mask, it apparently is good out there. 
Well, surprise, surprise. Google fires 28 employees involved in a sit-in protest. Over $1.2 billion Israeli contract. What? No way. Uh, from Thomas, Thomas rather, uh, Barbary, Google has fired 28 employees over their participation in a 10-hour sit-in at the Search Giants offices in New York and Sunnyvale, California. Uh, to protest the company's business ties with the Israeli government, the Post has learned. The pro-Palestinian staffers, who wore traditional Arab headscarves as they stormed and occupied the office of a top executive in California on Tuesday, were terminated late Wednesday after an internal investigation. Google's vice president of global security, Chris Rackell, said in a company-wide memo. They took over office spaces, defaced our property, physically impeded, impeded rather, the work of other Googlers. They wrote, their behavior was unacceptable, extremely disruptive, and made co-workers, this is what I love, feel threatened. Ha ha! There you go, people. And the tables, the tables have turned. Tables have turned out there. So there you go. There is... You're fired. You're fired. You are native land, but you're fired. Get out of here. Hey. I, I think it's kind of sick when, you know, pasty white people come out with the traditional Arab headscarf and think they're just going to play a Yasser Arafat or something. Like, yeah, good luck. Good luck with that, fellas. Good luck. As long as you're woo-flu sensitive, says P-Money, you can occupy anything you want. No, you can't. They're fired. They are fired. So congratulations, Google. Give you a little bit of hard time last time, but you came through. They, they finally decided not to be evil for like half a second. So uh, congratulations. Congratulations out there. Um, I had this story. Listen. You can read the headline. You, you can already know what the guy says. You, you can already predict it. The, the, the traditional stuff. Yada, yada, yada. Blah, 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 blah. You probably already tell what Beer has to say about it as well. So I'm just like, eh. Eh. I, I think Beer's just going to take the position of, you know, unless we can just kind of make fun of it or something like that. I, I, it's just like, I. You don't want to avoid it, but uh, you, you just kind of want to ignore it, you know, because the guy's just trying to stir up trouble just for headlines and clicks and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, uh, Nakati Gatawa, uh, uh, kiss off, man. I, I really don't, I really don't care. Really don't care, man. You want to know why? You want to know why out there that Bear doesn't care? Because he's got probably the favorite news story that he's had all year, people. I, I should have done this the last show. I didn't want to do too many political stuff out there, but I, I couldn't. Bear can't resist, people. He literally cannot resist. We're going to skip over old Cuddy here. No, the Cuddy, whatever the hell his name is. Uh, go over here to old Brandon here. Uh, from the New York Post. And Stephen Nelson. White House admits Brandon's uncle wasn't eaten by cannibals, died in the Pacific Ocean crash. A White House press secretary and possible mop, Carrie and Jereen Perry, acknowledged Thursday that Brandon's maternal uncle, Ambrose Finnegan, actually died when his plane crashed in the Pacific Ocean during World War II, and that he wasn't... <laughs> Pardon me, people. <clears throat> and that he wasn't eaten by cannibals, as Biden implied, on two separate occasions Wednesday. <laughs> uh, John Pierre uh, told reporters on Air Force One that the 81-year-old president, quote-unquote, was merely expressing how incredibly proud he was of Finnegan when Biden suggested New Guinea natives had eaten them in 1944. <laughs> I'm so proud my uncle got eaten. 
You saw the president. He was incredibly proud of his uncle's service in the uniform. You saw him at the war memorial. It was incredibly emotional and important to him. Said noted mop, en route to Philadelphia, where Biden was making his third consecutive campaign day visit to the Keystone State, you saw him respond to all of you when asked about the moment yesterday, and his uncle, who lost his life when the military aircraft he was on, crashed in the Pacific after taking off from New Guinea. I, I guess he's full there. He, he's, had it, he's had his fill. Had his fill. There, there's old Finnegan. Old Finnegan. Mmm, delicious. Uh, the press secretary cut a short follow-up question, citing the presidential plane's approach to the Philadelphia airport. Hopefully it wasn't taken down and Brandon eaten by cannibals in Philadelphia. We all know how many cannibals are in Philadelphia, people. Calm down, Secret Service. Just a joke. Uh, Brandon indicated that cannibals finished off Finnegan after visiting a Scranton, Pennsylvania war memorial that bears his uncle's name. Quote, he got shot down in an area where there were a lot of cannibals at the time. They never recovered his body, but the government went back when I went down there, and they checked and they found some parts of the plane. Brandon told reporters in Scranton where he was born and lived off and on until he was 10 years old. There's the airplane. There's the mop. Uh, later Wednesday, Brandon told steelworkers in Pittsburgh that Ambrose Finnegan, quote, got shot, uh, shot down in New Guinea and they never found the body because there used to be, <laughs> there were a lot of cannibals for real, for real in that part of New Guinea. The official U.S. military account of Finnegan's death, referenced by a uh, mop, contradicts the president's story. For unknown reasons, this plane was forced to ditch in the ocean off the coast of New Guinea. Both engines failed at low altitude, and the aircraft's nose hit the water hard, the Pentagon said, according to the accounting agency. Uh, three men failed to emerge from the sinking wreck and were lost in the crash. One crew member survived and was rescued by a passing barge. An aerial search the next day found no traces of the missing aircraft or the lost crew members because they were in aboriginal stomachs, people. No lie. A Biden has a long history of telling provably false personal anecdotes or dubious tales which there is no documentation. Corn Pop was a bad dude. In an attempt to connect to his audience, in this case Pennsylvania voters, also possible cannibals, who could determine the outcome of his bid for a second term against a former president. Orange man bad, people. Orange man. Orange man bad. Here's old Finnegan. Tasty. Tasty, tasty. Oh, it's not true, SP Money. I was going to ask the cannibals, uh, what wine goes with Brandon's family? Well, I'm glad you asked, P Money, because Bear's got that answer right here. Right here, man. That's why you come to Bear to know what's going on with the cannibals, man. Lost for words. That would be the Guardian and Rebecca Radcliffe out here. Lost for words. Joe Brandon's tale. Mm, pardon me. Uh, burping up a little bit of the uh, the hamburger that beer had. 99.9% uh, .9 human free. I, I, I promise you that. No lie. No lie. <sighs> Joe Biden's a tale about cannibals bemuses Papua New Guinea's residents. Uh, the president's suggestion that his uncle Bossy was eaten by cannibals. <laughs> what kind of world do we live in? I'm sorry, the White House has to come out and correct. No, the president's uncle was not eaten by cannibals. Well, we'll find out why here. Uh, Joe Brandon's uh, suggestion that his uncle may have been eaten by cannibals in Papua New Guinea during World War II has been met with a mixture of bemusement and criticism in the country. Gee, I wonder why. Uh, Brandon spoke about his uncle, Second Lieutenant Ambrose J. Finnegan Jr. Uh, what? There's there's a there's another Ambrose J. Finnegan. Okay. 
a while campaigning in Pittsburgh on Wednesday describing how Uncle Bossy had flown a single engine plane. There's the plane. It's got two engines. That's the first line. Uh, had flown a single engine planes as reconnaissance flights during the war, but said that he got shot down in New Guinea, adding that they never found the body because there used to be a lot of cannibals. <laughs> For real. For real. My word is a Brandon uh, in that part of New Guinea. <laughs> uh, official war record say Finnegan was killed when on a plane on which he was a passenger experienced engine failure and crashed in the Pacific Ocean. The records do not mention cannibal or state that the plane was shot down. Uh, analyst in Papua New Guinea, uh, who were shown his comments, described the claims as unsubstantiated and poorly judged, pointing out they were coming out at a time when the U.S. has been seeking to strengthen its ties with the country and counter Chinese influence in the region. The Malaysian people, a group of people who Papua New Guinea is part of, are a very proud people, said Michael uh, Kabanui, a lecturer in the political science at the University of Papua New Guinea. And they would find this kind of categorization offensive. Not because someone says, oh, there used to be cannibalism in the uh, Papua New Guinea area. Yes, we know that. It's a fact. But taking it out of context, and employing your uncle jumps out of the plane, and somehow we think it's a good meal is unacceptable. <laughs> Cannibalism was practiced in some communities in the past. In specific contents, uh, he said, such as eating a deceased relative out of respect. Who amongst us hasn't done that? Yeah, that, that would be an awkward funeral. Uh, to prevent their body from decomposing. Uh, there was context. They wouldn't just eat any white man that fell from the sky. <laughs> we have standards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, I can't even, people. <laughs> We're not going to eat a white man fall from the sky. We have standards here in Papua New Guinea. Gosh dang it. Uh, uh, I need a break here. Uh, uh, I'm dying, people. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> professional show beer professional show <clears throat> the practice was not due to people lacking food he added pointing out that archaeological whatever evidence illustrate that agriculture was practiced in Papua New Guinea more than 10,000 years ago yeah we just like to eat people you know <laughs> we weren't hungry or anything like that yeah you know just a little taste of old uncle about 79,000 U.S. soldiers remain unaccounted for in the Second World War, uh, uh, Kabuni added. And they're spread from Southeast Asia to the Korean Peninsula and Europe. Uh, what is Brandon implying? Uh, all 79,000 that were never found were eaten? <laughs> we have standards. <laughs> Not any white man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, others were simply bemused by the remarks. I'm entirely lost for words, actually. Bear 2. Bear, uh... Uh, Bear 2. <laughs> uh, said somebody, uh, who was recently selected as the alternate prime minister for the opposition. I, I don't feel offended. It's hilarious, really. I'm sure when Biden was a child... Uh, those are the things he heard his parents say. And it probably stuck with him all his life. Old Uncle Uncle Finney out there got eaten by cannibals. Uh, uh, some other economic uh, lecturer at the University of Papua New Guinea uh, said the claims were unhelpful. Really? No way. And pointed out that it comes after Biden canceled a brief trip to the country last year. Probably because he thought he was going to be eaten. Uh, it pains the PNG in a bad light. Paints, rather. Uh, Papua New Guinea has already had a lot of neg negative press around riots and tribal infighting. 
And, you know, eating the uncle of the President of the United States doesn't really help. <laughs> uh, for a president to say that, particularly after a lot of deals have been struck with the PNG and the work they've been doing in the Pacific, even off the cuff, I don't think that should have been said at all. According to the Pentagon's uh, POWMIA accounting agency, Biden's uncle died, yada, yada, yada. We already saw that. We already got all of that. They have standards. Standards in Papua New Guinea. They're not just going to eat anybody that falls out of the sky, people. They have high standards. <laughs> uh, and, and as Bear says, Bear says all the time. I mean, people... People think, oh, oh, people are delicious. Not really. Not really. It, it, listen, it goes salmon, then garbage, and then people. You know, it'd be third on the list for beer. If there was salmon, beer's going for salmon. If there wasn't salmon but there's garbage, eh, beer's going to go for the garbage. If there's no garbage and there's no salmon, eh, listen, I'm not just going to eat any white man that falls out of the sky. <laughs> Ah, uh, all right. I, I can't. I can't even. That's, that's. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, that doesn't. That does it for bear people. I, I, I can't. I, I can't go much higher than we've already hit. I can't go much higher than that. It's just literally, literally impossible. At the end of the year, if we make it, you know, uh, nuclear war or a plague and famine aside, uh, climate emergency, this definitely is going to go. Uh, top five of Bear's stories of the year. President Biden's uncle, not, I repeat, not eaten by cannibals. Not eaten by cannibals. <clears throat> oh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, oh, it's not true. I was going to ask the cannibals what why. Oh, okay, yeah, we got that. Uh, bear eating a hamburger. Uh, have I ever seen Bear eat a cow? Well, not the entire cow. I mean, one piece at a time. Uh, Barry, uh, you don't know about Ambrose Finnegan Sr. I'm ashamed of you. Well, I apologize. I apologize. I, I meant it was either uh, people or animals for dinner. Of course, we chose the former. <laughs> Not any white man. We've got standards here. We only eat. We only eat our paternal. You know, uh, family members out here in Papua New Guinea. Not not just any white guy that falls out of the sky. <laughs> Uh, I think we have a record for length of time. Bear laughing during a live stream. I think so. I think so. <laughs> this is the world we live in, P-Money. White House comes out. I I'm sorry. The president was mistaken. His uncle was not, was not eaten by cannibals. Not eaten. He says, uh, so if I go to the restaurants, I won't see Brandon's family served here. Disappointing. But um bump. But um but um bump. Well, I think that's the best. <laughs> I think that's the best place to leave it. Uh, let me find out where is hold on, where is the let's find out where the um where we are. On the voting here before we go, I know P Money didn't vote. Uh, with two votes, an entire two votes, yes, yes, Kucherov will win the MVP year this year, award this year. So take that. Take that, P Money. Take that. <laughs> uh, boy. I can't, I can't top. I can't top the cannibal story, people. I just, I can't. I mean, where else do we have to go here? I have nowhere else to go. All right, let me end the poll. There we go. Everybody's put in their vote. There we go. Thank you. Thank you for voting out here. Thank you for voting. Poll complete. Uh, thank you to the other person out there that voted. Uh, we know, we know P Money did not. So um, once again, once again, want to uh, circle back around one last time here. Please, please do go check out uh, Gary's book out here. Some great stuff. Uh, you've got the link in the description, people. So do go check it out. 
great, great stuff for you to check out there. Um, can't, can't say enough good things. I mean, he's even got the award going on there. So congratulations, Gary. Excellent, excellent book all around, sir. Excellent book all around. So, all right. Well, I do want to thank, I do want to thank, of course, P Money for sticking in there. Even with all his hockey talk that he had, just kind of stirring in the knife there. That's all right. Uh, Derpy, if you're still around, great to have you here, man. Great to have you here. Uh, come on by again. Even though we, we do sometimes talk a little, little hockey talk every once in a while. Uh, ho hopefully for another couple months for Bear. Hopefully knock on, knock on wood here. Knock on wood. So uh, want to thank all of you and our Russian bots and lurkers out there. But, you know, all this talk about uh, Papua New Guinea and cannibals has made Bear hungry. <laughs> so until next time, people, grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr